Okay, yep. So today we move to the topic of three, creating bed with IoT in our business model innovation clock through the Internet of Things. So this week outline will be in the CBA, I upload some resources on the resources section. You can see video clips, clips about group project. And also I will give you some hints how to develop the group project at the end of today's lecture. So you may start to have a look at some video clips about IoT development in the current industry. And I also put two group project examples and that are expectation for you, more like benchmark, for you to match for your final group project. And you don't need to pick up group project members and I will assign, we will assign this for you. And we'll try to make very international team for each group and borrow strengths from each of you to develop your unique IoT project. And in today's lecture, we'll start from creating value with IoT. I will give you more application, why data analytics is very important for IoT products. And we'll start to talk about the value appropriation, more clear and deep, deeply to see why value appropriation cannot be observed using traditional product price view in business model, as you, as you learn in most business school class. At the end, I think today you already can enjoy the R visualization lab made by Eddie. Actually, I watched this in the, in the morning, quite good, actually. Okay, let's move on. So we move to how do we use data analytics to create value for IoT products? So now, usually, most people think about internet of things. They will start to think about hardware, hardware defined product. What a hardware defined product is now you put a sensor and actuate, actuators on the things or item, such as washing machine here. And hardware defined products have three elements sensors, connected sensors, and connected actuators, and embedded system. So, and not only from hardware view, if we start from engineer's view, we can see there are a lot of terminologies in IoT product, such as you can see your TCP, IP models, not about IoT application using IP address on the internet. And we have different data format used in the local firm's database system. We also have application layers, depends on who you link to. And we also have transport layers and internet layers, different routing. At the end, we have different protocol about how machine talking to the machine. And don't worry this very much because we will have six talks from industry. They will explain this in a very detail because some of them, they are engineers really working in this area. They also graduate from our university, the double E department. Now, one thing you need to care about when we say machine talk to machine and we need to work on protocol, protocol is language used in the machine communication. And our, the, our invite speaker will explain this later in the very detail. So this will, should not be the barrier in our class. Okay. So now we move to the software defined product. IoT potential actually is not from hardware, it's from software. So if we start to put a cloud on it, that means software. And we want to work beyond sensors and actuators in the double engineer's view. So there are two parts in the software defined product is cyber models and applications. Let's further explain it. Cyber models are software algorithms that present IoT value and are shared by application and analytics. So I think you know what application. Application are software code as a you as a apps on your mobile phone. They provide product logic and put data together and start to have interface with the other apps. So make apps communicating with apps and service and people. So when you start the applications and you start to execute the model, model is more like I want this app or this machine do something in my defined algorithm. And we will see example very quick. So 
in order to drive the model work for me more like a machine make a judgment. All machines start to repair on its own or send signal about the request of repairing on its own. You need to have data analysis to say now is the time for machine to do the action on machine its own. <coughs> so we need to use data to build compares of the models as what you already see in the past three weeks or tutorials. So software defined product and analytics generate all the value in the IoT product. So now we start to move to the external systems. So analytics is all about answering questions. We already say we want to build application on, on software defined product. Sensors and actuators are just here, but they are pretty limited in the business value from ecosystem view. If IoT only have sensors and actuators, IoT has no potential. The issue is about apps. So in order to make apps work, when we use cloud and to collect data from sensors and actuators on the machine, and we start to link data to, do you remember we have the cloud? We start to put the data into analytics more like machine learning or regression or the classification algorithm to say now whether it's a, should, it's a good timing to do some action. And we'll see more example later. And mainly there are three applications using analytics to do. First is if we collect the data in the history and what happened in the cause and effect sense, what is the major factors driving particular result and we see using historical data. And the second issue using data is what is happening. If I want a machine to decide what is the best time to change elements for avoiding downtime, the best way is machine needs to build on its own for statistical control chart and start to see certain performance. If the performance chart, such as temperature or the rotation speed, is above or below certain limit, a machine sh should start to alarm, make alarm to say, now we should do something. So it's what is happening. And now we start to say, the next thing is the most important thing for IoT value. What's going to happen? If we can predict at least 80% accuracy for this wheel, all these elements to be down, and we can replace it before it happens, and you save a lot of money. Even for financial purpose, last week we already showed if we can avoid downtime, we're using very simple capital, the asset pricing model, we see this can huge million dollars for a company, just to save one element. So it has a huge potential. So analytics link everything here together, so I think now we can start to imagine machine data linked to analytics and also data service such as weather and all information collected by the cloud or business system and also legacy business system using very old database and the other IoT products. So now we have network fabric, the product cloud make hardware defined product, software defined product and enterprise data together, and everything will happen in the real time. So, simply speaking, there are two networks in any IoT product. One is operational technology networks, such as if I have to wash a machine or to the machinery equipment, they start to have machine-to-machine -machine communication using local protocol, and we call this kind of network as operational technology network. When we start to get data from this, linked to the IT network, information technology network, using IP address, such as internet, and we start to uplink operational technology networks data to information technology networks. So, so we can start to see all the magic occur is in the past 10 years, when we say some firms are very good in industrial computers, mainly they work on machine-to-machine -machine communication. 
So they only work on communication on operational technology networks. And you already can see on the video clip, I put on resource, resource sharing in SIPA. The profit is very small. The profit is very small. So now all the potential to drive all big giants such as GE, Bosch, and Google to enter IoT just because now operational technology can start to communicate with internet. Okay? So this is the basic idea about why value can be created through the operational technology and information technology networks. So I start to give you some example what magic occur between operational technology and information technology. We have four ways to do it. Using this connection between OT and IT, we can make product better. Or operate the product better. Or support products better. And even further, make a new product. We start to see this example. We have acetabular reamer. And you know this is for surgery. When you use acetabular reamer to change the hips on your bulb, and we not need to think about what kind of analytics I can use if sensors is on this reamer. And reamer sensors can start to see many, many important data, such as ro rotation speed, temperature. Can this information help this surgery become more smooth and do it in a better way? So if we have some domain knowledge from healthcare, we start to see actually temperature during surgery is a function of rotation speed, pressure, and time. If we can use some regression or machine learning to find that function or non-parametric regression, we start to do prediction. And that's, that's very important because if we can predict temperature occur in the surgery, and we can make our patient less suffering. Does this make sense? So with our sensors on Reamer, this is almost impossible to do. So application will be, if we find out that magic function, we can control rotation speed to limit temperature. OK? So now, I will say analytics. We need to use statistics to find out what is that function using regressions you learn in the other class and also from our R tutorials. Our R tutorials cover most important regression te uh, techniques we need to do these kind of things. Okay, so I already say it can make your hip replacement in the shortest time when making the patient say healthier and less suffering. So I think that's straightforward. So now we move to second example, operate products better. I think you all heard about smart grid. If now I want to use IoT, put the sensors on electricity supply and water supply, and how this help us to do better job. So if now I can put the sensors on the pipe, water supplies, and electricity supply. And I can use a remote controller to decide how to supply water and wage using some optimization such as linear programming you learn in this class. And also use regression to build the function to predict electricity amount on each household or other supply node. And at the end, you already know, I don't need to dispatch operators to check certain spots or sites in a regular time. They only go there when we need it. And the city will become better, and we don't need to spend money on this kind of expenditure, even we don't know why we want to use it. OK? So that's smart grid. So smart, if we start to have this idea, putting sensors on water and electricity supply, and we reduce human cost, increase efficiency, and reduce downtime, as shown in the last week example. So this generates value through using machine to make judgment when we should do repairing. Now we can also make products better. And you can see 
if now we want to work, want to find a way to improve the use of a bucket wheel excavator. And usually we know if you like me living in Australia for a long time, we see this for the mining industry. And this kind of machine is very expensive. And if we can find out some function, this expensive machine, the temperature during the operations is a function for load and angular velocity and vibration, whatever. And friction is the other function and stress or strain is the other function. And it ha can help us to signal when we should make machine down to change the certain elements in their machine. So we can reduce failure rather than just entire mining operation just shut down and it can keep going. So analytics generate value to make existing product better. Increase uptime and reduce unscheduled downtimes. Okay, is everything okay so far? Now, the last one is make new products. So, so I think now this is a smart watch. You already know this is, is the only example I do not put too much information. If IoT with sensor to make your watch is not watch only, such as become your sport coach, I think you already know, and also become your personal doctor. And it's user interface, it, sorry, it's you, uh, user interface can, if you change layout of user interface and you can change usability on this watch. So watch have more possibility to be your personal doctor and personal coach if we use it in the right way. And IoT also make this happen because watch get your location data in, on every second and send it to the cloud. So people design this watch, all the apps inside the watch, they start to collect your data on every second. And this will make many things will happen and you may generate a new product we still cannot imagine now. And this will rely on your imagination. So that's why Apple and Google, they want to all get into this market and they still don't know why they want to do it. Okay. If we start to think these aspects, these four aspects of IoT product, um, what opportunity and threat generated by these four aspects? First, if we start to see we have IoT products on watch and on surgery, and how will IoT influence enterprise? We see negative impacts. Other firms outside your industry, they will start to enter your industry and your product may be replaced by them. And we will see from today's example later. And for our company, the best opportunity is our product can go to the other industry, sell outside my original industry. So my value creation potential can be bigger in the original segment I have. Okay, so if we want to make this happen, we all need new business models.